Great, thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure uh, for me as I get my uh, bearings, I suppose, somewhat slowly, to introduce what looks like a very interesting uh, set of presentations, particularly um, from a variety of sources and a slightly variety of topics under the general heading of emerging new markets. One of fascinating areas potentially of new markets is the idea of luxury sports tourism. And Christian, are you here to present this? So I will present for Christiane uh, as we uh, present uh, together. And unfortunately, I have to say sorry for her. We at the ISM, we changed our system back from digital teaching to on-site teaching and so there was a change in, uh, in let's say the last sessions of the semester and so Christiane uh, has to teach today so I said okay I will uh, do the presentation for the both of us. Uh, Alexander thank you very much and I assume that we'll follow if you're happy with that the idea of 20 minutes of presentation which will then give us 10 minutes for questions and discussion at the end. Is that fine for you? That is perfect yes. So. Great. Alexander Hodick, very um, please forgive the sparse introduction. Uh, I, I know you are an expert in sustainability. You have interest in diving tourism, right? Yes. And we um, winter sports generally. But yes. please. <laughs> <laughs> so diving and winter sports all the time. Um, yeah. And uh, why we were talking now about uh, sustainable luxury sports tourism. This is because uh, my colleague Christiane, she is an expert for fashion management at the ISM in Berlin and, and works together with a lot of companies in that area. And um, yeah, just from some discussions uh, between the colleagues, we saw that there might be an emergent market in the field of uh, sustainable luxury sports tourism, but we were not sure about that. And so we, we started uh, a paper just to get an idea about uh, uh, this uh, segment of a market, if this is really a segment or not. So uh, the first, um, the first, um, ideas we got from that, uh, I will present to you today. So therefore I give a little um, intro introduction. I already told you something about the purpose and then uh, of course, um, as it's a scientific paper, I will also inform you about the methods we did and the results. And then uh, maybe we can get into a discussion uh, about this, I think really interesting future market. So um, what we already know is that uh, sustainable luxury tourism is a rapidly growing, uh, but not really extensively studied market. Uh, Korea and colleagues, they just published uh, last year uh, a paper about that. And uh, we also know that um, luxury goods is not only limited to tourism, but uh, we can find luxury goods in, in various branches, uh, for example, in, uh, in the way uh, of uh, clothing. Yeah? And there we already can see that there is also a market for a market extension of luxury goods to, to sports. Uh, the, the system or the, the, the market of athleisure wear uh, maybe you have uh, already uh, seen some athletes or wear. Um, of course, I'm sure uh, we are all wearing uh, more or less, uh, let's say, uh, sports products in the daily life, even uh, though in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the business life, for example, sneakers and so on. And this has already also moved to uh, luxury goods. So I brought you uh, a little uh, picture on, on the right side and I think uh, we know uh, that not only uh, famous football uh, players are wearing um, luxury goods, but also the, the normal people, let's say, they are interested in this athleisure, also connected to the luxury goods. So the idea was, if this is an um, uh, extent of market in, in the field of 
of clothing and wares, uh, maybe we can see this uh, also uh, for the future in the field of tourism. What we also know from, uh, from, from the, the figures and also from uh, some, uh, let's say, uh, future uh, perspectives. So um, at least uh, um, maybe not uh, um, affected by COVID-19, but uh, the expectations for the luxury tourism market is, is a, was a quite good one. And I would say um, maybe, especially this very small market compared to the whole uh, tourism market, but um, also after COVID-19, maybe some of those who are interested in, in luxury tourism are still able to, to have international tourism. And so um, I would expect that the numbers maybe are not growing as expected before COVID-19, but uh, it might uh, also grow afterwards. So the expectation was to dribble uh, between 2021 and 2027. So we will not uh, be too clear about the figures here, but I think the, the trend uh, is, is clear also about, uh, about that. So uh, the purpose of our uh, paper is um, to discuss if sustainable, sustainable luxury sports tourism, tourism can be seen as an emerging market. Yeah, also uh, a nice picture how uh, what we could understand, uh, for example, on sustainable luxury sports tourism, or at least maybe sustainable in brackets. So this will be another discussion. Uh, I think an also very interesting discussion, but um, just to get an idea about, uh, about this uh, market, um, yeah, we, we had a kind of hypothesis. Uh, so we stated that um, uh, a sustainable luxury sport tourism, which focuses on providing authentic experiences, has a big potential and maybe uh, will also contribute to a sustainable development of destinations. So whatever that means at the first point. And um, just to get an idea about, uh, about the market and, and the phenomenon for maybe two, uh, we did the kind of uh, Two, uh, two methods. First of all, we, we had a look to the literature about sustainable luxury tourism of the last 10 years. Um, so we just made a, a literature analysis. And in addition, um, we, uh, made an, we made six expert interviews um, uh, during the beginning of, of this year, we did all um, interviews online and um, yeah, we were able to, to have really interesting experts, some uh, working in the field of uh, the tourism industry, others are working in the special field of luxury tourism already, others are more uh, from the scientific level and um, one was also from uh, let's say the luxury goods, luxury fashion uh, market um, from Italy, for example, where there is this uh, uh, very famous. So, and I will present uh, you the the outcomes of of those uh, first little um, uh, work we have done. So we could identify um, by a literature search 150 contributions at first. After a first check uh, uh, about um, how suitable they are and, and doubles out and so on, finally we could uh, uh, take 133 contributions that have dealt uh, with luxury tourism, sustainable luxury tourism, yeah, the, the words were sustainable and uh, luxury and tourism, um, with in them some period, periodical papers and um, let's say five ebooks and um, we tried to uh, create some categories about the main topics in uh, sustainable luxury tourism and therefore we we found out let's see three main uh, categories dealing with the development of destinations regarding um, sustainable luxury tourism. Um, another category dealing with the, the corporate social responsibility of the organizations offering luxury tourism, let's say. 
and uh, finally a third one dealing with customer demands and including this category also a lot of case studies dealing um, of course with the with the customers and also with the with the destinations and and um, those um, just offering um, luxury sports to luxury tourism first of all and um, yeah regarding the three categories maybe some uh, main points um, so one of this uh, we could see uh, very often is that hospitality is a very important point and um, just to have it back in in our head uh, hospitality in sports is uh, also very important and often we could see that those offering hospitality in, in this luxury market are also those companies offering hospitality, for example, in sports events. Um, then we could also see that, um, let's say, the, the customers, um, they are very interested overall in, uh, uh, in uh, sustainability, but um, to be sure, uh, sometimes we could also see it's a kind of greenwashing. So let's say uh, a negative aspect, at least uh, we could integrate a little bit like this. But uh, also uh, looking to Line and Hangs from 2016, it was interesting to see that um, destinations with natural resources, and we just heard about uh, Ricardo's uh, keynote, um, they are also very interesting for, uh, for the, the, the luxury tourists. So um, the question is if, uh, for example, nature sports tourism and uh, luxury aspects can fit together. So this is surely uh, some interesting point for, for the future discussion. And um, then finally, um, I just quoted from Adriana from 2019, because it's quite interesting and something maybe some of you also have in mind. Of course, we know that those uh, luxury tourists are uh, sophisticated and chameleons and something special, um, but um, they are looking for authentic um, offerings. Yeah? So for authentic uh, tourists, um, experiences, let's say, in authentic environments. Um, and uh, this might be interesting also for, for, the, for the destinations. So uh, from the literature analysis, we could see that uh, from our side, first of all, there are some connections with, which could be interesting for, for, for sports tourism. And um, this was something we also involved into the uh, interviews. So we just, of course, asked some open questions. And, and those um, we interviewed, they, they give us a lot of information. And um, regarding uh, the time, I will just reduce it a little bit to, uh, to, to, to uh, statements. Um, from our expert B, um, and um, what they stated is that they are sure about that the customer, customer demand in future uh, with the next generation, there will be um, more questions on sustainable development or environmental impact. Um, and this is just focusing on the, uh, on the uh, luxury tourists, yeah? So, um, although maybe sometimes luxury tourism is maybe not directly connected to sustainable uh, aspects. Um, so the experts say, and this is uh, not only expert B, so it was uh, from all the experts, that um, this group of tourists, they will more and more, even more focus on sustainable aspects. So this is one interesting uh, effect. And on the other side, um, they also stated that there are already uh, some areas where we can see the connection between luxury and sports tourism. So, for example, um, let's say established uh, winter sports destinations. We know from, uh, from Austria, for example, some very um, well-known uh, 
luxury destinations. Um, I think yesterday we heard also something about the innovations in Ischgl, but also um, some, some destinations, for example, in, uh, in the area of, uh, of, of Switzerland. They are well known for luxury offerings with five-star hotels, spas, and so on. But um, what we could also see that uh, it's not or at least the experts at, uh, expect that uh, it is not all about, um, let's say, um, artificial snow and so on. No, they really expect that those also sports oriented uh, luxury tourists are interested in these authentic uh, destinations and sustainable aspects. So it was quite interesting. And from that, we are sure that um, from the active side, um, there is a huge market for uh, sustainable luxury tourism, sports tourism, for example, in skiing and golf, which is uh, traditionally um, something maybe more near to, uh, to, to luxury tourism, but um, at least uh, uh, there was also one uh, one one remark from uh, from from another expert just telling us about it's not only the established uh, kinds of sports which are interesting it's also doing um, some some very special experiences uh, in in walking through through a, a special nature and so on so what what the customers are calling for so and on the other side uh, we know also maybe not really sustainable aspects uh, in, in luxury tourism but i would say at least uh, luxury sports tourism from the passive side uh, regarding famous events in formula one or uh, we saw some weeks ago also of course the roland garros uh, tennis tournament and other now uh, wimbledon is coming already so i think this is very uh, also very a famous example for luxury sports tourism, bringing all the offerings together. So um, I could tell you much more about, uh, especially the, the, the qualitative um, uh, results we, we found out, but um, as I said, 15 minutes are given to me, I will just leap over to maybe a small discussion. So uh, from our side, we would say sustainable luxury sports tourism has a great potential. Um, also to bring sustainable in, impact to destinations because, um, as I told you, the, uh, the customers are looking for that. Um, we need uh, to see that luxury sports tourism then has to tend also to preserve the areas where it's done. And um, on the other side, we have to know um, that there are some open questions, just open questions. But uh, I would say uh, working further on this topic will be very important and interesting because um, I think maybe it's a niche market, but a very interesting niche market where uh, finally a lot of money can be generated, but uh, the money, if it is used right, we can really contribute to, to a sustainable development of, of destinations where luxury sport tourism is already offered or will be offered in future. And um, yeah, I'm just uh, looking forward what maybe your ideas about this market are. Um, I just brought you uh, maybe not a sustainable uh, example finally, but the, the Port Aventura with the Formula One uh, land uh, is also a nice picture bringing together luxury aspects and maybe more or less sports. Um, and of course, in the destination, which is also nice for at least summer sports. So these are our first ideas. We are still working on that. And um, yeah, I'm just looking forward for your remarks and, and questions. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Alexander. And uh, thank you for keeping the time so assiduously. That's <laughs> excellent. Uh, actually, Patrick has started the uh, ball rolling already with a general question. Uh, Patrick, would you like to forward that um, to get the ball rolling? Yeah, what is the financial level of luxury tourism for for one consumer? I think it's the same in each country. Um, <laughs> uh, 
So uh, this is a very interesting question. I would say luxury tourism in general is a is a global thing. Yeah, we have to um, at least uh, at the starting point. So I I really speak about the luxury uh, top level tourism. Then it's just a global thing, and this is something uh, also difficult for sustainable aspects because this means. Uh, it does not uh, matter if you live in Russia, in Germany, or in, in the United States. If you want to go skiing in the luxury resort in Ischgl, you will just go there, maybe with your own plane, which is definitely not sustainable. Um, but uh, therefore, I would say, yeah, it's a it's a high level, um, and um, and. Uh, the, the offerings, um, yeah, they they are high level wherever they are. So because the people are coming there, they are looking for for luxury uh, luxury tourism, and um, yeah, and and it's not the difference if uh, maybe you are going um, swimming or or doing water sports uh, in in the Mediterranean or in the Caribbean in the Caribbean because um, the the level uh, you have to pay would be the almost the same but it is really difficult to say numbers finally yeah Thanks, so, um, on the other way uh, maybe uh, one more uh, point what we also can see is that this luxury luxury uh, demand is growing so it is not only the uh, highest five percent of the uh, of the um, of the people but it's more and more people who are interested in luxury for example Athleisure, uh, yeah, so a sneaker from Gucci um, uh, costing uh, with a price of 200 or 400 uh, euros. This is something uh, a, a wider range of people is already demanding. So maybe the same would be true for luxury sports tourism. Thanks. If anyone wishes to add a question, please use the uh, reaction button and raise your hand. That'd be great. While I wait for hands to be raised, uh, Alexander, the thing that has obviously struck me has been, is there not essential contradictions in what you're talking about? First of all, luxury involves uh, consumption, and therefore, you know, obviously, <laughs> there's a contradiction there with, with ecology and, and, and conservation. And secondly, sport involves surely inclusivity, whereas the whole nature of luxury marketing is surely to promote a market on the basis of exclusivity. Would yeah. you like to respond to those inherent questions, uh, those sort of tensions in, in, in the whole perspective? I, I think this is, um, and maybe you already just uh, saw or recognized in, in how I argumented that, uh, that I see the problem, of course, too. But um, so at least, let's say, my hope or, or my wish, let's say my wish would be uh, if we have a look to to our society, we can see that uh, sustainability at the moment, especially ecological um, sustainability is growing. And, and um, let's see, all of also those people uh, which are maybe at the moment typical for, for, for demanding luxury goods or luxury tourism are changing their minds. And if it is possible um, to address to maybe an emerging, uh, uh, emerging group of people who think about that, uh, it will be the way um, a sustainable luxury sports tourism should be uh, created, let's say, in order to contribute to that. Because in, I would say in the field of sports, because of the nature, this is even much easier um, to to do it than in other areas. For example, yeah, if you are doing a kayaking, a luxury kayaking uh, <laughs> uh, in in a in a preserved area, I think um, if you're doing this in a luxury way um, with uh, a lot of money you have to spend, it is very or the chance is given just to use the income from from these luxury tourists to preserve the area even more and there then we have also a positive uh, impact to to all the other users of the preserved area so if it would be able 
to develop a luxury tourism in that way and maybe not in the way of formula one is doing that this would be i would now say a good uh, uh, case of luxury sports tourism but uh, there is a lot of hope in it i would say <laughs> but uh, it would be worth to develop i would say mm -hmm. do we have any other questions Okay, well, Alexander, I think time is creeping on because we, we yeah. raise a lot of issues which uh, we could bat back and forth, That's particularly true. by putting in a Formula One uh, on your screen to finish. I like the ironies in there. That's great. <laughs> um, <laughs> so thanks very much for your thank thought provoking you. presentation. And thanks to Christiana too. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So can I call on the next presentation, which is, I think, Raphael, who is presenting next? Anyone here for the next paper? Michelle, Francisco? Yes. Ah, Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Raphael, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll just quickly introduce you to your topic, and then I'll hand the floor, the floor to you. Um, the, this presentation comes from our host country, from Italy, and uh, Rochelle, uh, and I mean, some of the invitations, some of the speakers are specialists in the use of um, uh, internationalization of traditional, uh, traditional organizations and SMEs, and also in interpersonal social networks, I understand. Yes. But, uh, your topic yes. is in product innovation and uh, given us an example of a uh, rather special bike hub uh, in the Naples region, I think. So well, with in, pleasure in to your region. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, Tuscany. Um, so it's all yours for 20 minutes or, yeah. Okay. yeah. Can, I, can I share my screen? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, can you see it? All good. Okay, uh, thanks for uh, presentation. Uh, so uh, I want to thank my colleague, Michele, uh, Francesco and Barbara that support me uh, and we collaborate in uh, this study. Um, I go up, I skip on because your presentation is very good. So. Uh, I want to, in, in this paper, uh, I will talk about the aim of the paper, the, then uh, I will talk about the literature review, the methodology, uh, I talk about findings, then conclusion, uh, limitation, and uh, I hope I, I can, I'm able to give tips for scholars and managers, uh, both for uh, future research and uh, practice. So the aim of this paper is uh, uh, understand the process stage for creating an innovative tourism offer in a tradition and in a territorial area far from mass tourism. Uh, and uh, we want also to uh, understand the role of the player. Uh, in the in the stages of the process of creation and the development of the this tourism innovative offer. Um, in particular, we studied the case of Terre di Casole by Cab, a uh, by Cab uh, that um, that um, uh, in uh, in the Tuscany region. So uh, about the literature review, uh, we can say that uh, roots represent a concrete form of tourism uh, because tourism is uh, very uh, is, is growing during uh, uh, last year so uh, second tourists uh, choose uh, accommodation uh, based on special meals um, for example uh, um, with uh, proteins uh, uh, low fat and uh, moreover, uh, uh, cycle sy sy tourists uh, choose the uh, accommodation um, be 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 based on the location near trails and the presence of racks uh, in order to hold the uh, bikes and uh, safe places uh, um, 
for example, uh, with a camera in order to store in a, in a safe way uh, their cycles. And moreover, they, they want rental services and uh, um, cycle tourism um, want to, to pay, want to, uh, to pay a premium price uh, if the territory, if the hospitality, if the, the, um, the establishment, when they um, choose to um, spend their holidays, uh, are in contact with gastronomy, uh, landscape quality, culture, uh, local tradition, uh, some stability, and, and so on. Um, um, we noticed uh, in the literature that um, uh, hotel owners uh, among innovative entrepreneurs uh, feel the need to innovate uh, uh, the most by creating hotel types uh, based on uh, a continuous market segmentation. And um, establishment, uh, larger establishment um, trigger in, in innovative process that um, influence uh, other actors in the area in, the, in a network uh, uh, way and encourage the transformation of uh, local resources in the tourism product and services and uh, can uh, stimulate uh, uh, other investment from uh, both public and uh, private sector. And um, we can notice that uh, the territory uh, represents a place of learning uh, in which uh, actors can share a common vision that uh, produces useful in innovation for all st stakeholders. And uh, lay the, the groundwork to, to, to the birth of a, a larger uh, organized aggregation, uh, such as uh, uh, clusters, uh, uh, network, innovative system, and, and so on. And um, uh, special forms of public and private partnership um, can uh, help uh, territory uh, in order to develop uh, uh, offering system uh, in a destination where the practice of uh, cycle tourism uh, can be take place in a sustainable and balanced way. About the methodology uh, we used in uh, our paper, uh, we adopt an uh, exploratory approach uh, using a single case study with uh, embedded units. Uh, in order to be better describe the phenomenon uh, over the time uh, and uh, over the, the context uh, in, in which it acts. Uh, we conduct semi-structure in-depth interviews uh, um, through uh, video call, le le lasting uh, 35 and uh, 40 uh, minutes uh, in uh, April and uh, May, uh, uh, 2021, and uh, with the, the main subject of the bicab, of the uh, Terre de Casole bicab, uh, the exer external uh, professional creator and developer of the project, the owner of a hotel uh, that had the uh, idea to develop the project, a tool uh, guide, then we, we can say that uh, is a, um, a key. Uh, feature, feature in, in this project, and the, the mayor of uh, Casole Delza, uh, which can uh, offer a policymaker perspective. And uh, interviews were first reported, reported verbatim, then since, um, when summarized, and um, we merger the um, the what, what, what we find uh, in order to return a new form for, you, for the reader, according to Tutsi. And uh, we also perform a triangulation of data with secondary data collected from uh, websites and uh, press releases um, about the, the Terreti Casole uh, by CAB. And uh, uh, we use a narrative writing approach 
in order to report the, the case study we analyzed. Um, in this presentation, uh, we talk about the findings of the study and uh, the, um, the split of uh, uh, the, um, the various stage of the, the burn, uh, of the birth and the development of the project into um, five uh, uh, stages. The first stage is the birth of the idea when uh, the owner of an accommodation uh, calls a professional uh, for um, a marketing project related to uh, his business. Uh, he wanted to, um, to bring to Caso Ledelsa uh, what he um, what he said before, what he saw before in uh, other countries when uh, cycle tourism is is, um, is more de de developed, so, such such as Germany. And uh, um, the professional proposes uh, the, a solution based on territorial network instead of uh, a marketing project for a, a single individual business. In the second stage of the project, uh, um, we have the network creation and several local entrepreneurs, uh, such as uh, BNB owners, uh, farmhouse owners, hotels, restaurants, other business such as a rental shop for bikes, uh, starting to offer bike friendly services to engage and uh, engage in social projects related to uh, cycle uh, tourism. Uh, for example, uh, a big company of the area uh, started to, um, to share their uh, knowledge, their know-how in, uh, in um, correlated pro project, um, such as uh, school and, and so on. Uh, implementation and communication of bike routes is the third, uh, the third, the third stage of the project. And in this case, a, a tour guide uh, maps uh, using GPS uh, the routes um, uh, in, the, in the area and um, creating routes uh, of varying the, the, the difficulty and for the, the different types of bikes, bikes such as uh, e-bikes, uh, um, uh, street uh, and uh, mountain bikes. The policy maker, uh, the professional creator, and the tour get in there to an agreement with the promoter of the Grand Tour of Val di Merse, that is um, a, a Grand Tour, um, a big routes who take place uh, in the area, and they um, start to uh, promote uh, and integrate the Grand Tour Val di Merse in the, in the project in order uh, because a, a grand tour uh, lets people to, um, to do sports in the area and uh, with, a, um, with, a, with a, a good result for accommodation and uh, other shops in the, in the area. Um, Caso Ledelza, as a policy maker, uh, finances the placement of additional uh, signage um, and uh, of the, um, the, the part of Grand Tour Val di Merse that uh, uh, pass from uh, Caso Ledesta and is responsible uh, of the maintenance of the, the Grand Tour. The, moreover, the professional creator uh, takes care of co the communication and the promotion of the project, um, such as uh, uh, press involvement, uh, the participation uh, in, in fairs, uh, uh, the relation with tool operators uh, that before uh, where um, uh, they operate in, um, in uh, Emilia Romagna, uh, Trentino Alto Adige and other region uh, where in, in, in which uh, uh, cycle tourism is, um, is, grow it is uh, more development. And also um, the, the professional creator um, take care the, the, the communication of the entire uh, Grand Tour Val di Merse itinerary. 
the, 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 the first stage of the, um, of the project is the, op the updating of the territory uh, from a bike friendly per perspective. And in this way, the policymaker upgrades the area with infrastructures and services for bike, uh, for cycle tourists. Uh, for example, bike station, uh, e-bike charging station, uh, bank in which uh, people can sit and uh, uh, can charge uh, uh, their smartphone and, and so on. Um, the Pro Loco um, has a, a, a key role in, in project because uh, uh, Pro Loco manages the public and private funds uh, in the, in the project. About uh, the uh, fifth uh, um, stage of the project is the expansion, the, the, the growth of, of, of the project. And Terdi Casole uh, by Carmen inspires the creation of a larger hub, Strade di Siena, which incorporates 28 uh, uh, municipalities and uh, also involves the, the whole Tuscany region in, uh, in the, in the creation of a, a common um, product for cycle tourism. Ah, I wanted to... About the conclusion, uh, this study, Tel Di Casole uh, by CAB represent a replicable model in, in context uh, where the territory and the local st stakeholder uh, are um, particularly suits for the de for the development of cycle tourism and uh, emerging elements uh, uh, from this study uh, are that uh, hotel owners uh, uh, trigger process process that also influence other actors in the in, in the area and passion uh, in free and voluntary uh, participation in our case in our case uh, uh, the the free participation of the tour guide that the, uh, starts to to maps uh, routes for uh, for a cycle uh, trip and we can found that uh, in other studies in Ro in Rotorua in New Zealand in a study by Taylor uh, et al of 2019 and the, the active participation of the policymaker in network development he is very uh, fruitful in this way because uh, uh, the policymaker have um, a, a total uh, vision and a, a long-term perspective that uh, um, can help uh, uh, the area in uh, in, the in the development of the network and uh, the tourism offers. The importance of good marketing strategy and uh, communication is very useful uh, in the, that typology of projects. And uh, moreover, a strong cohesion uh, among stakeholders uh, based on commitment and trust can help the development of, um, of a hub, of a network. The importance of a common vision within network in order to to produce innovation is also important in this way. Uh, of course, uh, this study uh, has limitation. Uh, first limitation uh, is that uh, uh, results are not general generalizable because uh, uh, they refer to a single case study. But future studies could analyze other network of the cycling related offering and build theories uh, based on uh, case uh, um, in a comparison of case, uh, such as uh, uh, Valle Savio by Cotel, uh, by Cab, that um, uh, is uh, uh, growing in uh, Emilia Romagna region. Uh, other studies can use a quantitative approach uh, to statically investigate the impact of variables. Uh, such as passion and good marketing strategy in uh, creating bike friendly uh, the destination. Uh, but uh, this paper offers important insight for hotel managers and small entrepreneurs uh, uh, who want to combine their resources and skill to create a tourist destination for uh, a booming demand 
um, because uh, uh, cycle tourism is, is growing in Italy and in other countries. And uh, uh, that can uh, bring ben benefit uh, related to the presence and the permanence of tourists in the, in the area. Uh, other benefit in uh, seasonal adjustment, uh, uh, the creation of new job opportunities for locals and the uh, collective uh, development of skill uh, in the area, in the, in the for uh, stakeholders in the area, and the creation of new opportunities uh, within the um, stakeholder in the area. Uh, we want to thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have questions, uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy to answer. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pity we don't have some recorded uh, applause. I think you deserve applause for a very well sketched and, and the sort of um, case study which is going to add to our field quite tremendously. Uh, again, oh, we have a couple of questions here or not? No. Anyone who likes to ask a question, please raise the hand in the, um, in the reaction screen. But in the meantime, I'll just start you off perhaps with uh, a question. I was really struck reading your abstract how, what a good field cyclo is. I mean, and you could cope with a whole range of, of participants from the, the serious cyclists to the casual cyclists. So it is a wonderful product to take, to take forward at um, uh, cyclo tourism. Would you think your case study about the processes involved in supporting the cycle hub would apply to what sort of other products other than cycle tourism? Would you like, could you think it would extend to as profitably? Yeah, of course, uh, um, Terre di Casole by Cab is a first project in Italy uh, on about the construction of a, um, a cycle tourism offer, but uh, this project can also apply in other, in other countries, in other areas that have uh, a, a particularly of the, te the territory, uh, such as lands landscapes, uh, such as uh, uh, a culture, uh, of course, for, for tourism and uh, cycle tourism in particular. Uh, it's a project that um, has um, stages. In a first stage, uh, you can analyze the territory in a second stage, you can uh, choose partner uh, can help you in the in, in the de development of the of the project. Um, then uh, you have to uh, construct to to build and the maps routes for cycle tourists because mm -hmm. uh, uh, cycle tourists, uh, as we said before, choose accommodation. Um, we. Uh, in which they can find a routes to, to, to do sport, to their, to, uh, they uh, give uh, life to their passion, to live the territory uh, on the bike, through the bike. Uh, so it's important to, to, to build roots and uh, uh, a big roots, uh, for example, uh, um, uh, lasting uh, 100 meals. Uh, in order to um, to let uh, uh, tourists to to stay in the area for many days, uh, then communication is is really important to of, of course to communicate the project and uh, attract uh, people uh, from Italy and uh, also for from uh, all, uh, other countries such as Germany, such as uh, Australia, such as uh, New Zealand. That uh, in in these countries the culture of cycle tourism is more development uh, than Italy. Okay, thanks, Rafael. Uh, there's a, there is a question raised by Claude. Who will, Claude? Could you have your question, please? Yes, um, uh, I, I really like your, your presentation. It's very very interesting, and um, uh, of course I completely approve when you say that uh, the, the biking tourism is uh, in a boom. Uh, I already saw, two, just the last days, I saw two or three papers concerning this, this topic. It's, uh, it's very interesting. I've got a question. 
um, um, what do you think it could be uh, what the, the, the example you took and you, 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 you presented, do you think it could be the possibility uh, for the sport tourism to uh, be an element to develop a region? Of course, of course, because um, uh, cycle tourist is high spending tourist. So um, in this way, um, uh, you, um, with a, a, a full project that can attract uh, um, tourists in the, in the region, uh, can develop the, the, the health, the, um, the, um, the, um, all the process, all the, um, everything in the region, the creation of new jobs, opportunity, Uh, the creation uh, um, of new uh, way to to tourism offer. Yeah, and, and do you think? Yes, please. Yes, and um, in in this way, um, as you told before, uh, um, uh, cycle tourism e is growing. Uh, also, thanks to thanks to COVID 19 that. Uh, um, let people to, to spend their holidays uh, uh, alone. Uh, that uh, in, in this period, uh, people want to spend their holidays in, in places uh, in which they, uh, um, they can stay uh, with, without mask, uh, without uh, uh, people, uh, in which they can join the landscape um, and the uh, the meals uh, and uh, the opportunity and uh, um, everything an area and a region can offer. So region uh, are calling to uh, improve um, this way of tourism, this, day, this, this way of sustainable tourism uh, in order to grow. Um, Spain and Croatia, uh, for example, um, Uh, are doing uh, it for many years. In Italy, is growing now, uh, but uh, uh, cycle tourism uh, can be a great opportunity for a local area in uh, the develop development uh, for people and for uh, creation of new job and for business, for uh, policy maker and uh, all stakeholder Uh, operates uh, in the area and the region in particular. Okay. Thank you, Rafael. Happy cook. I, we, I'm concerned that we have to keep to some sort of time to uh, follow our timetable. We could go on a long while with both of our speakers. And I noticed there that Michelle is sitting in quietly as your co-author in the background. So thank you, Michelle, too, for your contribution to that presentation. I, 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 yes, I just want to, to add two words. I invite you to participate to the plenary session this evening uh, because uh, we will speak about a, a research project concerning uh, uh, the development of region thanks to sport tourism. And I think you are absolutely in the good line, the right line of uh, what we, we want to do. It, probably it could be a possibility for you to participate to this research project. Thanks, I, I will, thanks. Thank you, Claude. Thank you, Raphael, again. Um, Yes, an excellent segue into our final presentation for this uh, session. Um, it's pretty hard to follow the, the first two presenters we've had, but we've got the heavyweights coming in now. We've got the uh, senior members of Ernest coming in to present on sports, small scale sport tourism events and local sustainable development, establishing the methodology for future further research, which picks up on uh, Claude's questions there um, regarding the, the last case study. The presenter, Claude, is this you or Richard, R Ricardo, or who's presenting this one? Ricardo. There, Ricardo. Ricardo. <laughs> Over to you, Ricardo. Actually, <laughs> we will present both, and the main uh, communication will be made by Derek, that, by the way, should be sleeping at California this time. So I will uh, start, um, I will share my um, computer, uh, my screen. Uh, 
and I, I only present this first slide. And after that, I will present a recorded video from uh, a communication made by, by Derek. So um, this work, this communication is based in our recent uh, published uh, book that um, uh, presents the results from our uh, last earnest uh, project related with small scale sport tourism events and local sustainable development with several uh, case studies from half marathons in nine different countries. So um, the work, um, the uh, edition work was made by me, Claude, so Claude and, and Derek, but um, different, almost 20 other contributors uh, authors contributed to to this work and to this project and to this book. So I, I also want to um, say thank you to all of them. So I will um, share the video. I hope that uh, all is fine. And uh, after the video, I also invite Claude to comment um, with me the story of this pro this long 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 project okay so i hope you enjoy the video sport tourism is one of the fastest growing sectors within the global tourism industry many cities countries and regions want to capitalize on the local and global opportunities of sport tourism and yet global sport contributes to our carbon footprints and accelerates climate change as such, sport tourism development must be planned and implemented in such a way as to mitigate against negative impacts to local communities and the world at large. Running events have increased around the world in the last two decades. This study analyzed nine countries across three continents by looking at the half marathon events organized in small and medium sized cities. We applied a comparative methodology to examine the sport tourism ecosystem globally. One of the reasons why running tourism has become one of the fastest growing sectors of sport tourism worldwide has to do with the increasing diversity of races, including trail running, obstacle races, charity, and folklore running, to name but a few of these myriad events. This diversity of events and distances ranging from 5K to ultra marathons allows for a more customized array of challenges for a wider number of participants. The proposed comparative method helps scholars and practitioners evaluate the tripartite economic, environmental, and social impacts of these events on the local community. The methodological approach included a survey instrument or questionnaire to collect information from key stakeholders involved in the event, as well as semi-structured interviews to gather further data regarding the organizational and management processes of the event. Direct observation was the final aspect of this methodology, a means to triangulate all of the collected data. The data was then analyzed utilizing a mixed methods approach. This methodology reveals best practices, but it also reveals some of the worst practices, such as a complete lack of attention paid to environmental sustainability by event organizers with a singular focus on revenue generation or community building. And yet we found excellent examples of collaboration at the public private nexus with critical buy-in by a range of stakeholders. These become the gold standard for event management and local sustainable development. These best practices can then be adopted as new sport tourism events are conceived, planned, and then implemented. There were several critical findings in our study. I'll mention just a few here. Size matters when it comes to local sustainable development. Higgum has argued that small scale sport tourism may comply with the principles of sustainable tourism more so than mega sporting events. Host destinations can derive diverse benefits from organizing sport tourism events, particularly, particularly when they're held in existing facilities, as in most of our case studies, where cities 
streets and roadways were repurposed to become temporary sports arenas or venues. And yet there was a wide range of public-private collaboration among these case studies, some of which had limited synergies around the promotion of sustainable development. For example, researchers found that there was a lack of direct collaboration between the tourism office and the race organizers. As such, many of the contributing authors found that race organizers often did not utilize the event to promote local tourism in a meaningful way. Findings from the nine half marathons demonstrate tremendous variability in sport tourism organization, both in the motivation to host these events and in the method of implementation. The organizers noted several motivations for why they decided to host these half marathons, including the promotion of the city and the region, promotion of sport participation broadly, charity, profit, and community building. There was also a wide range of motivations for race or event participation, determined mostly by the demographic profiles of the runners. The majority of participants in the nine half marathons were male, middle-aged, well-educated, with annual incomes above their national average. These participants were motivated mostly by pleasure or fun and the challenge of the race. Overall, however, female participation in running events is increasing in all categories globally. In total, female participation has risen from under 20% in 1986 to today, when for the first time in history, there were more female than male runners worldwide in 2020. Finally, our research indicates that few cities or organizers made intentional efforts to promote real environmental sustainability, other than paying lip service to it. Many were unaware of or simply chose to ignore green standards or certification. Measuring sustainable development is inconsistent across sport. While the reported increases in sport tourism during the 21st century are impressive, these data are also fraught with potential challenges in their lack of accuracy. One reason for this inaccuracy is because many nations, regions, and municipalities do not draw distinctions between tourism broadly and sport tourism specifically. When they do, most nations devise their own metrics for what gets the count as sport tourism. Working definitions of tourism and sport tourism and their contributions to both local and the gross national product of countries worldwide remain inconsistent despite efforts to operationalize these definitions. In conclusion, we're hopeful that these international research projects will help lead to policy solutions for encouraging events that stimulate sustainable local development and promote a greater standardization of global sustainability goals at the international, national, and local levels, including a genuine ethic of care for human beings, the environment, and for our planet. This study and recently published book, book adopted a novel comparative methodology that promises the articulation of potential best practices to consider for future planning and implementation. While we selected the half marathon as the unit of comparative analysis, we encourage fellow scholars and researchers to replicate this study and compare other activities or events within diff different cultural contexts. The next Earnest project and current call for papers proposes a similar comparative methodology, but shifts the unit of analysis from the activity or event to a given space or place a geographic location or socioeconomic territory at the intersection of sport tourism and sustainability. These projects will initially focus on small island territories or economies and the varied and diverse impacts of sport tourism on sustainable development. We will then shift our focus on islands of sustainability or manufactured territories within unique geographical geographic spaces where sport tourism activities or events create an evolving cultural identity with corresponding economic, social, and environmental impacts. We encourage international scholars to join us in this proposed research project. Thank you for your time and interest in our presentation. We very much appreciate it.
So um, now I, I also invite um, Claude to, to comment and, and to, to share with me some some thoughts um, about this this project. Uh, this project born in 2015 in Lille, if you remember, Claude, I visited you and we tried to establish a methodology. After that, uh, six months later or one year later, we invited colleagues around the world um, to and, and we shared the comparative methodology uh, and we started to collect data in 2016 um, and uh, nine uh, colleagues answered to our to our call and um, established the, the methodology the, this comparative methodology and after that we contact uh, an, an, an editor um, Springer and after that we worked in, in the book and um, in 2021 we published this um, this book, finally this book, so um, almost uh, six years later. So this is a, <laughs> a late born, but it is now here with us. And, and I think it is a, a great contribution to this field. And we will work on, on the theory built and in the methodology that we built and, and we will start a new projects around this. Just to comment, the, the book is uh, has um, fourteen chapters, three initial three initial chapters: introduction, literature re review, methodology, and after that, nine case studies. And we finish with a conclusion, a summary, and a compar comparative analysis analysis between the 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 different uh, countries analyzed. So and now I invite Claude to also comment this this project and this book. Okay, uh, thank you, Ricardo. I, I must say that uh, Ricardo was the, the leader of this uh, research project. Uh, this project is just like a, an elephant pregnancy because uh, we needed how many six years or something? Almost um, five, 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 five. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Five years. Yeah. Uh, yes, but between the ID and the, the, the publication, anyway, uh, it was long, but um, why was it so long? Because uh, Ricardo was some, is somebody very, very precise, and uh, he asked to the participants, I mean the authors, uh, to um, write and rewrite some parts and to give us tables, very precise tables. Anyway, when I say that, it's not a criticism at, at all, not at all. Uh, it's to say that thanks to um, what uh, Ricardo asked us, uh, yes, Ricardo asked us, um, we could compare what happens in the different countries. Without this strict methodology, it wouldn't have been possible to compare. And that is what is missing most of the time uh, in the, the, the uh, research, in, in especially in the uh, sport tourism field. Um, now, today, a lot of, of university, I mean, mostly the, the research laboratory, um, don't allow their, their uh, participants, their members, to uh, participate to books, to the writing of books. They just want them to publish papers because of the ranking of the, of the laboratory, the ranking of the university and so on and so forth. But I think that it's a, a big mistake uh, because it's impossible to, um, to produce something you can compare just in a paper, it's too short you need place and so you need a book okay so uh, what what to say what to say uh, just buy the book of course <laughs> <laughs> but i, I know well, that a you. lot of uh, a lot of 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 uh, uh, library already bought it uh, 
Yeah. Thanks very much, uh, Claude. Uh, rather than allow this to become uh, another advertising uh, <laughs> scale, I, I will throw it open to the group. Uh, just a quick comment. Uh, um, as someone who's been interested in comparative studies for many years, I think that um, the setting up of such a methodology is, is an excellent start uh, because it's not just a narrow quantitative perspective, which can tell us pretty little actually when we try to compare figures across different contexts and different cultures. Uh, it's, it's the bringing of the two together. It's the actual careful matching and interpretation of the context within these within which these findings are, are are on earth. So uh, a great start. And I think that, uh, as Claude mentioned earlier, that if we can get people like Raphael and um, Michelle's work to join into this movement, then we'll start to really develop a, a, a field of knowledge, which will have value to practitioners all over. Do we have any questions? Anyone who likes to, or is it, is it hunger time over there now? Is it? Uh... If, I, if I can add uh, something. Uh, thanks to uh, what uh, Ricardo asked us, uh, the precision and so on. Uh, mm. It's really a, a, a new mm. methodology who uh, appeared little by little. And this methodology, we, uh, we will try and we are trying to use it to apply it on other projects. And not probably for sure, it is the, the red line of, of our uh, research project now for, for probably many years. And, mm -hmm. and uh, the symbol or the, the identity, I prefer identity of the INIS now. Mm. Excellent. Uh, yes, I think the idea of the islands is looking at us in the South Pacific is certainly something which has a, a lot to offer. Uh, given the state of those, those economies and uh, what they have to offer to, to tourists. Uh, we have no question, I, I feel. People have been stunned by the sheer breadth of the uh, information that's been put about and for the knowledge and learning that's been uh, displayed. I'm grateful for the all the speakers for their contribution. Um, I'm it's even starting to learn how to handle the technology slowly. <laughs> but um, thank you all speakers. Thank you all attendants. And I believe we start again in an hour, which leaves time for you guys to have lunch and me to have dinner. <laughs> okay. Okay. See you yeah. in one hour. Thank you, Thank John. You. Thank you a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank See you, you all. Bye. See you.